Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to week 5. I'm so excited to see you all again. I'm sorry I'm a day late, I have a reason for it. Um, I will explain it in just a minute. But first, I really just wanted to jump in really fast and go ahead and talk about the physical differences um, that I've seen in the past week. And so far, I wouldn't say there has been much change, unfortunately, like usual. But what I have noticed is my skin continues to soften. Sometimes I even go like this and like, wow, you know. I never noticed it get this soft before, so uh, that's something cool. And also, my hair is continuing to grow longer. I mean, that's just something I'm doing on my own, and I, you know, make it easier for later. Um, but apart from that, from physical changes, there's not much. But I did notice one big mental change throughout the week, and um, unfortunately, uh, about a week ago or so, or a few days ago. Um, YouTuber Total Biscuit passed away, and you might be asking yourself, why does this matter at all to you? Um, and that's because I used to watch this YouTuber a lot, and I used to really enjoy his channel. I used to enjoy his reviews, and he often helped help me make selections on games and things of that nature. Um, and but at the same time, I've never known this guy. It's not like I knew who this person was. Um, on, on a daily basis or anything, so I didn't have any personal attachment to it. Um, but a few nights ago for me, I ended up watching a bunch of videos about his death or uh, his talking about people talking about how much he meant to them or uh, if he knew them personally and things like that. And um, I actually started to cry, and I'm like, and I didn't really understand why I was crying because, again, I don't know this guy personally. It's not like he was a personal family member of mine. If I hadn't been going through estrogen, I can tell you now there's no way that I would have, and it's not because I'm a heartless person, it's just I don't express emotion like that. Um, so that is something that has definitely changed in the most recent uh, a week or so. Um, I think that mentally I'm really starting to get affected by those hormones a lot more um, than when I wasn't taking them. Um, but with that, I wanted to mention the next thing. I think. This was important. I thought about doing this, and the reason I waited one day before uploading this video is um, I think today I should go ahead and show you guys how to inject um, uh, estro estradiol sub subcutaneously. I can't talk today, I'm sorry. Um, and in case there's other people doing it or just starting or want to know how it works in the future um, and what to be scared of, because a lot of people have. A fear of needles and I understand that and I'm one of the lucky few that doesn't really bother me so that's what I want to do with you guys today and I hope it's informative and I hope it helps um, just keep in mind I will not be injecting myself in this video um, simply because I'm nervous that it may go against YouTube's terms and service so just keep that in mind I will show you everything that you can I'll even show you how to pinch the skin um, but I'm not going to go ahead and inject a needle just in case um, I'm breaking some kind of services there. Um, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and swap over to that instructions right now. All right, thanks, guys. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate now how to do this. I have all my required materials out here on the desk, so you should be able to see. Um, and I do apologize if the, if the video quality is a bit lower than it usually is. If for some reason, at this angle, my camera isn't very good at picking things up. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing you want to do is wash your hands. That is the most important thing because you don't know what kind of bacteria, viruses, or whatever have been on your hands um, but before this process, when you're sleeping, you're outside, whatever. Um, so make sure you wash your hands first. I've already done that. Um, so I'm not going to go walk. I'm sure you guys know how to wash your hands. So I'm not going to go through how to wash your hands 101. Um, the next step is make sure that your surface is sterile. So use some 409, clean it with whatever. So that, I've done that already as well. Okay, and then you actually get into the actual steps. So in here, you have your medication. I'm going to try to cover it up because I don't want to um, show you guys the exact like labeling on the bottle, personal information, things like that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and open it up. On the inside, we also have another little bottle, which I am going to again cover the labeling of, um, but you can see on top of that bottle you have a little, you might not see it very well, but there's like a little gray circle and at the center there's going to be 
uh, a little spot for you to stick something in because you are not going to try to take this cap off. I tried it myself and uh, trust me, it doesn't go well. Okay, so you're going to be wanting to inject part of the needle in the top here so you can get the, um, the fluid from it. All right, so set that down. Next thing you want to do is you're going to go ahead and get your needle out and ready. All right, it's a relatively simple needle. This is a subcutaneous needle, so it's very small. If you can see it there in the, I don't think you can actually see it through that plastic because of the camera, but um, it's very small. It goes up to like here, and that's about it. Um, and then when you get that out, you're going to go ahead and want to switch the head. So there's a little blue part or a little uh, lip here. When you have the needle, you're just going to want to go ahead and twist that off and pull it off. And then you're going to have the syringe blank like itself. And then you're going to remove the next item here. If I can get it open. There we go. It kind of fell out. But this is a much longer needle and it's much thicker. But it's not designed to inject. What you're going to do is you're going to apply this to the top of the syringe. And you're going to use that to draw the... Uh, the liquid the estrogen out of your bottle here as I mentioned earlier so when, when you got this there's one way that this is always tricking me up and I want to be very uh, careful about how I describe this because you can poke yourself and you really don't want to um, is that this part, plastic part needs to come off the needle right and that's for protect to protect it so what I do is I hold it by the lip that I removed the other one before. So there's a little pink part there, that, the lip. You're going to hold it by that, and you're going to hold the plastic, and you're going to pull apart to the side. And make sure you don't try to stop it, because then you can bring the needle back and jam yourself. And you don't want that to happen. But now you got the needle with the, the longer head on it. You're going to go ahead and take that. And this part, I might kind of just skip through, because it takes a while, and it's the most annoying part. You're going to go ahead and stick the needle inside of the um, actual fluid itself. And you're going to start pulling back on the, the syringe, attempting to get the fluid inside. The first couple of times, you don't really get anything. You just got to keep pulling and, and going at it. Um, there we go. And the thing is, you're going to have massive spaces with air bubbles on it. If you take a look there, if you can see the liquid in there, just above it is this clear bub air bubble. Now, the easiest way that I found to get rid of that air bubble is to turn it upside down, and it'll kind of move up. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you need to push the syringe back and give it a little wiggle, you know, for a little bit of help in there. And then you just kind of fiddle with that. All right, we're back. So basically, at this point, once you've drawn the liquid out, you should be at wherever it says the dosage on your little bottle here, which I'm going to set aside. Um, mine's very small, as you can see. Is I'm still just getting into it, so it's not uh, a lot. Um, and this is actually a little more than where you want it to be. You should want it to be about 0 0.04 milliliters. Milliliters? Am I saying that right? Yeah, milliliters. Grams per milliliter. Um, above. Where you usually are, because when you switch the heads, it's going to have to go through the actual um, needle itself, if that makes sense, um, and which has air, so you need to have a little bit more in there for it to function correctly. Um, so at that point, you're going to go ahead and you're going to twist and remove the top of this, and now you have the liquid in the syringe. You're going to apply that back on top and set it there, and reapply your original head. This is the one you have to be very careful not to accidentally poke yourself with, and I always worry about doing that. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold the, the lip there, you're going to take the top, oh, and see if that's me messing up. Um, make sure that it's on tight, and then pull when you can. Alright, and pull far apart, you don't want to accidentally stab yourself, because I've done that quite a few times. Alright, and then after... You're going to see up here, I'm going to try to make this as clear as possible, but you're going to push up on the syringe until you have a little bead of the liquid coming out from the side there like that. And then at that point, your syringe is ready to go. You can just kind of set it down. And you're going to take an alcohol swab right here. 
and you are going to apply that to the area of which you are injecting, okay? So for me, it, it's in my stomach near my belly button, basically about three finger lengths away from the belly button. So like right about here. Um, and you also want to cycle sites because if you don't, you know, you're doing damage by injecting a needle. You don't want to be re-injecting the same spot constantly. So make sure you switch sides of the belly button, maybe go above it, maybe go below it. Um, but, and then when you're ready, like I said, I'm not going to be showing the injection of the needle, but I'm going to go ahead. You'd be pinching this fat. You go ahead and mark it with the um, alcohol to kill any bacteria in the area. Dry it off. Usually use your hands to wave some air there. Dry it off. And then you're going to take the needle and then you're going to pinch the fat and inject it. Push it in and you're good to go. That's, it's as simple as that. Afterwards, there shouldn't really be any blood. If there's a drop of blood, don't freak out. When I first did it, I, you know, I messed up and there was some blood. I'm getting pretty good at it now, but just keep that in mind. Um, and afterwards, once this is all done, take your needles and things and dispose it inside your biohazard container. You can't put open needles or anything outside of the biohazard container. Um, it is illegal. Um, and then usually your doctor has a place for somewhere you can dump it. Um, and with that, that's basically the entire tutorial. I hope that helped you guys. Um, I hope it makes sense. Um, and I'm going to try to cut this video so it's not so long, because right now it's probably, we're pushing um, 10 minutes. I guess that's not that bad. So, but plus the part one is long. Okay, so you guys have a wonderful day. Remember, any comments, concerns, questions, advice, anything, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section. I really appreciate all the support. You guys have a lovely day, okay?